Now, for some reason, the internet has been sleeping on this chip from Intel. Here I have the Intel Core Ultra 225F. Now, when this was first released, I don't know, eight, nine months ago, it was up over $200 and not very interesting. But right now, over on Amazon, you can pick this up for $157. And it comes with an included box cooler. Now, that kind of makes it interesting now. So, this is a 10-core chip, has six performance cores, four E-cores, and a max turbo frequency of 4.9 gigahertz. Now, in today's video, we're going to be putting together a system, and we're going to be testing this chip to see if this is actually a good alternative or a good value for gaming. So, with that said, let's get to it. First thing we want to do is prep the motherboard, and as you can see, I have the M.2 already installed and I have the processor already installed in the socket. So basically what's left to do is put on the cooler, pop in the RAM, put on the heat sink, and then we can go ahead and prep the case. What could possibly go wrong using this box cooler? Now, for the case, I want this white, black, and yellow case by Allsay. It's their RAM series case. RAM 2.0, they call it. Now, I totally didn't buy this case because it looks like an Xbox controller. Not at all. That is totally not the reason. Now, I've gone ahead and installed the motherboard. I've installed the PSU. I've also wired up the case. So, the only thing really left for us to do here is install the graphics card. Now, if you thought I was going with an Intel card, you're wrong. I actually went with a 9060 XT because I'm curious to see if this 10-core beast of a chip can actually push this card at 1080p and 1440p. So let's get it installed and uh, see what happens. First, that was satisfying. Give it a go, and nothing happens. Oh, I gotta plug it in. Oh, something's happening. Ah, oh, and we got post. So, with the PC up and running. I installed Windows, I updated the BIOS, I enabled XMP, I downloaded some games, and in the very first game I played, which was Cyberpunk, I immediately ran into a problem. So here we are in Cyberpunk at 1440p, high settings, and the processor's running at 90 degrees. Holy cow, what is going on here? This is a dumpster fire. So, to make a long story short, I shut down the PC, I removed the box cooler, I installed an AIO just to make sure we had the proper cooling, and that brings us to the present day. <sighs> Amazing. So let's talk value real quick here. So in order to determine something's value, we need to compare it to something of equal performance or something in the neighborhood here. So I chose the Ryzen 5 7600 for two reasons. Because in a 10-game average benchmark, uh, the 7600 comes in at an average frame rate of 182 frames per second versus the Call Ultra at 178 frames per second, which puts them really close. And also, it does come with a box cooler, which makes it comparable to the Core Ultra. Now, in Cinebench R23, Core Ultra got a multi-core score of 16,102 versus the Ryzen 5 7600, which got a multi-core score of 14,355. So it did a little bit better than the Ryzen. So now we can talk platform cost. Now, the Ryzen 5 7600 has a total platform cost of $324.98. Whereas the Call Ultra has a total platform cost of $307.98 with a difference of $17. Now I tried to pick comparable motherboards and I think I did a pretty good job. The B860 Eagle versus the B850 Eagle, um, pretty close in value. So with a difference of $17 between the platform co cost, yeah, they were really close. So here we are in... Battlefield 6, we are at 1080p medium settings and currently getting an average of about 140 frames per second. 
The CPU usage is way up there at 81%, pulling 73 watts, and the GPU is at 100%, pulling 180 watts. The frame time graph, actually, pretty smooth. Game looks good, very responsive, no issues. Uh, but yeah, the, the, we are really putting that CPU to work at 80% utilization, most definitely. So there might be a bit of a bottleneck here. But let's see what happens when we move up to 1440p. So moving up to 1440p right away, we're getting about 109 FPS average. So we took a pretty big hit there to our FPS when we're up around the 150s. We have a 1% low of 78 now and the cpu utilization is at 86 percent as we move through this trench the gpu utilization is at 99 percent 180 watts frame time graph in all honesty is pretty smooth the game feels pretty smooth no issues responsive but it looks like we're taking a hit to our fps i, I would say this game this pairing with the cpu and the gpu or we definitely got a bit of a bottleneck going on especially when we're up around that 80 percent utilization so let's keep that in mind as we move forward so here we are in cs2 we are at 1080p low settings and we are getting 51 percent usage on our cpu gpu is about 88 percent and we're getting a frame rate of about 275 frames per second with a one percent low of 114. so yeah pretty good um we're not getting full utilization on the gpu yet but I think once we bump this up to 1440p, uh, we'll get full utilization. So, uh, yeah, you know, playable experience. Nice, smooth, frame time is smooth. Yeah, good pairing so far. So let's try 1440p. So here we are at 1440p low settings. And right off the bat, we're getting an average of about 319 frames per second. The CPU utilization is around 50%. GPU utilization is around 92%. So in comparison to 1080p, you know, we're getting about the same. I mean, I know this is a bot match, so it puts a lot of strain on the CPU, but I think if we did the CAM benchmark, we'd find there would be not much difference between 1080p low and 1440p low, which indicate to me uh, a possible bottleneck. So... Uh, so yeah, the CAM benchmarks confirm it. We got an average of 424 FPS at 1080p and an average of 429 FPS at 1440p with the 1% lows almost identical. And I did check this twice. So this tells me there's a definite CPU bottleneck here. So here we are in Cyberpunk. We're at 1080p high settings preset, and we are currently getting about 120 frames per second on the average. Uh, the CPU is at 89%, so definitely putting in some work here. Uh, even a game like Cyberpunk is pretty CPU intensive. Uh, I chose that for a reason. Um, CPU usage is at 85%. We are at 55 degrees. The frame time graph, eh, kind of smooth. It's responsive. The game looks good. Like, no issues here. Getting plenty of FPS at this settings. So let's move up to 1440p. So at 1440p, high settings, we are at about 160 frames per second on average. It doesn't look like we lost much. The game does look visually better at 1440p than 1080p. Uh, we have a 1% low of 76 the CPU usage is down in the 70s, 75, 78%. Temperatures are good all the way around. GPU is at 100%, which is great at 160 plus watts. And yeah, the gameplay is great. It's smooth. Uh, it's pushing the 9600 XT with no problem at all. So yeah. So in the end, the average was 161 frames per second at 1080p, and at 1440p, we averaged 120. I mean, what more can you ask for in a one-player game? I think it did an excellent job. So, conclusion. Is the Core Ultra 225F a good value? Well, in my opinion, I think at the current price point, it is definitely a good value. Now, uh, some of the games that I picked to play were definitely CPU intensive, and that was on purpose. I did not want the GPU to be the bottleneck. I wanted the CPU to be the bottleneck. So, you know, this current pairing, uh, the Core Ultra 225F with the 9600 XT, I think is okay. You'll definitely have 
good gameplay and enjoy it. If you're a 1080p first person shooter and you're looking for max FPS, you might gonna go with a little more powerful CPU. So tell me what you think. Do you think it's a good value or should you go with a more powerful CPU? Uh, I'd like to hear your comments down below. But with that said, that brings me to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Give it a thumbs up if you got value out of the video. And with that said, you all have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye now.